Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Spigot series. This time I'm going to show you how to finish the Christmas plugin that we started last episode. So Happy New Year's everybody. Um, I told you I was going to finish this video on Christmas or the day after, but I never got around to it because I got caught up with work stuff. But I'm back now. I'm going to finish it for you guys. And so let's see what we got so far. So we got some presents here and when you open it up, uh, it's supposed to have a thingy. It's supposed to show a thingy. Hold on. <laughs> let's see. So present. And let's put some stuff in here. All right. There we go. So yeah, we get the Merry Christmas. And it shows the hologram. And so let's try doing the next part, which is going to be uh, making the Christmas tree that floats up into the sky. So let's try doing that, okay? So let's go back to IntelliJ here. And so um, to do that, we're going to have another armor stand. So a Christmas tree itself is an item, but the easiest way that I can think of to have it float and move um, in midair is to have an armor stand that holds the item somehow and then make the armor stand itself invisible. So that's how we're going to do it. So let's make a new armor stand here. Oops, yeah, new armor stand. If I can type armor stand. It's kind of laggy armor stand and we're going to call this Christmas tree or we'll just call it tree for simplicity. And so we'll do chest dog get location dog get world. And let me zoom in for you guys here. So get world dot spawn entity chest dot get location. And what else do we need a entity type? So we're going to do entity type armor stand. There we go. And so now we can cast that to an armor stand entity. And we can of course do that because an armor stand is an entity. And so since this method here returns an entity, we can we can cast that entity into an armor stand basically. Um, let's see here. So one thing we want to do is adjust the location like we did up here so that it'll be centered correctly. So add 0 0.5 and then we'll start it at negative 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5. So that'll center it perfectly and then bring it down a little bit. And so let's add a few other things here. Let me just get, let's get some space going here. Um, so after that, we want to uh, set some things. So we'll do tree dot set gravity to false. Even though the tree, the armor stand is going to be moving upwards, we still want it to have no gravity just because we're going to be moving it manually by uh, editing the location. So then we'll do tree dot set can pick up items. Set can pick up items false. Tree dot set custom name and we don't really want a custom name so we're just going to leave that how it is for now and then we'll do set visible to false since, since we don't want the uh, armor stand to be visible and so how are we going to get the item stack of the tree the spruce tree to be on the armor stand so one way you could do it is by setting the helmet of the armor stand so if you do tree you can do set and you can set a bunch of stuff but you can also set a helmet we got to find it so helmets and as you can see helmet is actually a deprecated method but you can still use it if you want to it's not recommended that you use deprecated methods because um since it's deprecated it might be removed in a newer version of spigot but just for the the sake of showing you how we can do this i'm going to use it just because it gets the job done easily so we're going to do tree dot set helmet and it wants an item stack as a parameter here so we're going to make a new item stack new item stack material spruce tree spruce tree spruce tree oh sapling there we go spruce sapling and just one just one spruce sapling so that's going to set the helmet of the armor stand so it'll appear on the top of the armor stand so it'll float because the armor stand is actually invisible so we might need to set a few other things besides these here, but we'll leave that how it is for now. And we'll just see how that looks when we actually test it out. So before we test it out though, we need to actually make it float up into the sky. So how are we going to do that? Um, so we got to think about how can we make it so that every few seconds a thing happens. And the easiest way you can do that is with a runnable, a bucket runnable. So new bucket runnable. And you can use this to make tasks and with tasks you can make stuff happen every so often. Um, they're pretty cool. So bucket runnable and we're gonna have a we're gonna override the run method within that runnable here And then after that we can actually set what we wanted to do And so we have a few different tasks that we can uh, run here and um, what we're gonna use is a task timer I think let's see the documentation will help us let's expand this a little bit so a task timer um, It says there's a delay and a period so we don't really need a delay, we just need a, uh, a period, so every so often, so 
Um, that actually works perfectly. So we can just set the delay to zero. So run task timer, and we can give it an instance of the plugin, elf tutorial dot get plugin, and the delay will set to zero because we want it to run instantly pretty much. And then the period, the period is going to be how many ticks that we want this task to run. So every so often it'll run this um, according to what we specify, right? So 20 ticks is one second, just as a point of reference. So if we want to do it really fast, like every five seconds, or no, 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 every, every one fourth of a second, so every 25 milliseconds, I think, then we can just do five ticks. Since 20 ticks is one, that means that five times four would be one second. So 20 divided by four would be five. So I think that's how math works. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out, all right? So yeah, anyway, that should be good. And so that means that every five ticks, which should be like 25 milliseconds, this will run, okay? Until we cancel it. And so inside of this, what are we going to do? We need to make it go upwards. So if we were to do tree and set location, there's actually no set location method for a armor stand. So we have to use another method, teleport. We have to use the teleport method to uh, move the armor stand, which is a little weird, but um, it gets the job done. So I guess it's kind of the same thing. You know, you're moving something, teleporting something. It's very, very similar because you're just setting a new location, right? So we want to set the location a little bit higher than it was the first time. So tree teleport location is the parameter that it wants. And we're going to do the current location as.get location. So you can't sell, set the location, but you can get the location, not as, I mean uh, tree. So tree.get location, and we can add on to it. So we're, we want to provide a new location. So we're going to add on to the current location and provide that as a parameter. So in this case, we don't want to mess with the x and z axis. We want to mess with the, we want to mess with the y axis. So let's add on to that by uh, 0.25 and that should be enough. So what this will do is teleport the armor stand upwards by 0.25 every five ticks, okay? That's what that's gonna do. And so that's gonna go forever because we're not canceling the uh, task ever. So we need to cancel it at some point, but we'll do that in a second. First, let's just test it out to see what happens when we try this out. So if we do control Q here, we're actually using a synchronous method. And if you look closely, we, there's a bunch of different methods uh, we can use here, like uh, asynchronous tasks methods. And we're not using asynchronous tasks because since we're working with an entity here and doing a bunch of stuff with entities, it's not going to really be possible for us to use an asynchronous task. It's just not really, I tried it out myself and it doesn't really work. I guess it's just because that's just how Bucket works. You're not supposed to use asynchronous stuff with entities. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm doing it incorrectly, but I tried it out. And the point is, is that it doesn't work. So you want to use a synchronous task for this, which is fine because it gets the job done. Um, but yeah. So yeah, we're going to use a, a, a synchronous task, not an asynchronous task, just in case you were curious about that. And so that should be it. So let's test this out now to see what happens. All right, so let's go back here. So reload, confirm. Let's drop this. Let's get some new items to iBone1000. Okay, so no, no. All right, so now let's do slash present. And now we'll put everything in here. All right, so create present. That's going to create the present for us. Good. Let's put it down and boom. So as you can see, the uh, sapling here is moving upwards. It's a little off centered, it looks like, but not bad. But yeah, as you can see, it is moving upwards every five ticks, which is about uh, 0.25 milliseconds, I think. So like I said, we're gonna need to find a way to cancel it so that it actually stops. And uh, also we wanna make it spin like we saw in the example video. So let's try doing that, okay? So to make it spin, all we have to do is edit the, the pitch and the yaw of the tree. And so we can do that by doing set rotation. And so what it wants as a parameter is yaw and pitch. So yaw and pitch controls the, um, the yaw and pitch, which if you don't know what that means is that, let me actually pull up a diagram real quick, yaw and pitch. So this may be a little complicated if it's your first time looking at this, but this is basically what the, the roll, the pitch, and the yaw represent. We're not going to be messing with the roll at all, but the pitch and the yaw we're going to be, gonna be uh, messing with. And so if we have um, a, an airplane here, this would be the roll. We're not messing with the roll, but this would be the pitch. So like forwards, up and down, kind of hard to explain, but forwards, up and down would be the pitch. And then the yaw would be like sideways, back and forth in a way. So yeah, so it's just something you have to play with basically. But yeah, that's how that how that looks. Um, so tree.setLocation, and we want to provide a new uh, yawn pitch, 
And so let's get the current yaw and pitch like we're doing with the location here when we're teleporting and then add on to that, okay? So we'll do tree.getLocation.getYaw and we're gonna add on to that by an amount like 25F. M F means it's a float, of course, because actually it's asking for a float here. So 25F for a float. And then the second parameter, um, we want another float. So tree.getLocation.getPitch plus 25F. So that should um, get the current uh, rotation of the uh, item and then add on to it on both the yaw uh, and pitch uh, by 25 uh, float. Okay, so before we test it out though, let's try and make it so that um, the tree um, kills itself after you know a certain period of time. So the way we're gonna do this actually is not based on time, even though I just said that. It's actually gonna be based on the distance between the chest and the, and the armor stand. So we want to basically find a sweet spot between the floating item when it gets to a certain point and the chest. So we're gonna get the distance between the floating item and the chest. And when it reaches when it reaches a certain limit, then we're gonna delete the item, okay? So that's the easiest way um, instead of doing like a time-based thing. Although we could do that. Um, we could do like we activate it and then after five seconds we could delete it. That's one way we could do it. But I think, um, in my opinion, I think, you know, doing it based on distance is better. So for example, we activate it and then once it reaches like uh, 3.5 distance between those two things, then it, it'll delete itself, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So let me show you here. So every time this runs, we can do if tree.getLocation.getY to get the Y coordinate because that's all we're trying to measure here. We're trying to measure the distance between um, the height between two things, right? So it only makes sense to get the Y coordinate. Um, so uh, tree.getLocation.getY minus chest.getLocation.getY. And we want to check to see, let's grab this, put this in parentheses. We want to check to see if that difference is greater than or equal to a certain number. And I tested this before and 3.5 is actually a really good number to used for this. So once it reaches greater than or equal to 3.5 in the total high difference, then we can delete the armor stand and the, uh, the spruce sapling, okay? So to do that, we can simply do tree dot uh, remove, and that'll remove the armor stand of the tree. I mean the armor stand that holds the tree. And then also we want to make sure that we cancel the event or it'll just keep running forever. So we'll do this dot cancel and that'll cancel the event. And so otherwise, if the height difference is not greater than or equal to 3.5, then we can go ahead and continue with raising the height of the tree and also changing the rotation of the tree. So let's test this out and see what happens. All right, so reload confirm. Cool. And so now we'll do slash presence to make a new present here. Boom. Let's place it down and there we go. So now the tree is floating up into the sky and boom, as you can see there, it disappeared. So that's pretty cool. Let me show you one more time. So I'll run it and it's floating up, floating up, floating up, floating up and it disappears. Great. So I think that looks pretty cool. I don't know about you, but I think that's awesome. Uh, so what are we going to do now? Let's think about how we can make this look even more awesome. So I think whenever the uh, the tree reaches a certain point, whenever it deletes itself, it, sh it should also um, explode in a firework. I think that would be pretty cool too. And also I think that it should play a sound. I think that would also be pretty cool. So in here, whenever, um, after we remove the tree and before we cancel the task, we want to make a firework that explodes. I think we can do that, right? So let's try making a firework. Um, that's a little tricky. I don't do this often, but we'll try it out. So final firework, FW for firework, is equal to entity, <clears throat> And we'll do as.getLocation. Not as, I keep saying as um, for understand. So instead of as, we'll do tree.getLocation. And we want to make sure that it's centered, of course. So 0.5. Zero and then zero point five, and uh, after that we want to do entity type firework. Firework. There we go. So just like we're doing with the um, armor stand here, we're just going to do something very similar, which is spawn a new entity and then cast that to a firework because a firework is an entity. So back over here we can simply fix that and then import firework, firework, and then cast it like I said. So firework. 
there we go. So now that we have the firework entity object here, we can now um, make it, you know, colored and stuff, like change the colors and make it look nice. So we can do firework, firework, firework meta is equal to firework dot get firework meta, just like you would do with an item pretty much. And what's the problem here? So yeah, firework meta, there we go. Firework meta, firework meta is equal to firework dot get firework meta. And now we can edit the meta by doing fm dot add effect. And we can build a new effect by using the firework effect builder. So firework effects builder, oops, not build yet. So builder, and then on that we can add a few effects. So flicker, we can set it to flicker, which is cool. So true, a trail, true, and we can do some other stuff. So with, and I've done this ahead of time, of course, um, I'm not just, you know, magically coming up with this because, you know, fireworks are a little tricky to come up with. So this is something you just have to try with the trial and error. So yeah, you just have to play around with it pretty much. So firework effect dot type dot burst. So yeah, this is just the the um, effect that I thought was the best. Actually, someone made this for me. His name is Big Virus Boy. So thanks, Big Virus Boy. <laughs> With color, color dot red, color dot green, and color dot lime. And finally, we want to do build to actually build it. So that's going to build it, and that's going to set the effect. And then we'll do two more things. So fm dot set power to zero, which I think will make it so that it doesn't hurt you. And then fm dot set firework meta, set firework meta. Oh yeah, firework dot set firework meta, firework meta. And actually, I don't, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I think um, I was testing this out and a firework does hurt you, which I didn't know about before. Um, so let's see if we do control Q here. So it says the approximate power of the firework. Each level of power is half a second of flight time. Okay, so yeah, that has nothing to do with hurting you. That's just the firework itself. It's flight time and stuff like that. So never mind about that. But the firework does hurt you, so you might want to make it so that whenever the fire, firework does go off, you make the player invulnerable temporarily. Um, so yeah, let's actually do that. How about we do that? So let's do P dot sets invulnerable to true. And then after this, we'll do P dot sets invulnerable to false. I think that'll work, I hope. We'll find out. So true and then false to disable that. And so after we create the firework, we of course want to detonate it to make it actually go off. And there we go. So that should be our firework here, firework here. So we're just spawning it in the same location as the the tree. And uh, then we're, you know, making it look nice. And then we're just setting it off to make it actually, you know, do its thing, okay? And then also, like I said, let's also do a sound. So we'll do bucket. So we'll do tree dot get world dot and we can do play sound and we'll play the sound in the same location so tree dot get location dot yeah just get location and then the sound we want to do um i don't know what a sound good sound would be i think maybe a a, a bell possibly so we could try that out so sound dot block bell resonate and then the volume i'm just going to do 2.0 f for float because it's asking for a float all right, and so we'll just have to see how that sounds. So let's test it out now to see what all these new effects look like. All right, so let's go back here. So reload, confirm. And then we'll place down the chest. Boom. So the tree floats up and then it should explode. And boom, there we go, awesome. And then the sound, I didn't hear the sound. Let me turn my sound back on. Let's do that. Uh, music and sound, master volume, music, blocks. Okay, I should be able to hear it now. Let me turn on my uh, speaker. Okay, make sure everything is good to go. All right, let's, let's try it out now. I did not hear anything. I think, yeah, I think just because I need to restart my game, but it should work. So uh, you can test it out if you make the plugin too. So yeah, try it out. And so yeah, we're making good progress so far. The tree goes up, it explodes, the firework happens. And so now let's make it so that whenever that happens, the items also shoot out, like I showed you in the example video, okay? So that um, basically whenever you open the present, all the items shoot out for you to grab your presents.
Okay, so right here after we set the player back to being vulnerable, we want to basically get all the items in the chest currently, loop through, loop through them, and then shoot them out of the chest, basically. Um, or out of the, uh, out of the sky, I guess, over the chest. So we actually have all these items already at the beginning here. We did item stack array of items and we access the chest inventory to get all the items so we can use that so we'll do a simple for each loop here so for item stack item items and so we want to make sure that the item that we're grabbing is not null because the slot if we try grabbing an item from a slot and the slot is empty it's going to be null so we want to do item is not equal to null and so since we know the item is not equal to null, we can actually use it because if we tried using it and it was null, then we would get a null exception, which is not good. So to drop the item, we can do chest.getWorld.dropItem. The first parameter we need to provide is a location. So the location that we can grab is, well, first let's make a location um, object reference here. So location location is equal to uh, chest.getLocation dot add 0 0.5 0 and then 0 0.5 to make sure it's centered so what we're going to do is start from the bottom and then go upwards so watch this so we're going to give it the location so location but we're going to add on to it again so we'll do 0 1 and then 0 so it's going to add on to the y coordinate every single time um, there's a new item inside the loop here so basically the um, the items are going to go upwards by themselves and you'll see how that looks in a second so the second parameter we need is the actual item that we're going to be dropping if we do control P here. So item stack, item, just like that. So what that should do, just again to recap, is whenever the um, whenever the tree reaches a certain height, it's going to remove that tree, and then the fireworks going to go off, the sound is going to play, and then it's going to loop through all of the contents of that chest with all the presents inside of it, or the items inside of it, and then starting from the bottom of the chest, it's going to start dropping items, and then for each item in that chest, it's going to go higher and higher and higher and then drop um, each item until it reaches, you know, no more items. And so that should make a cool effect where the items like shoot up into the sky and then drop to the ground. So that should be pretty cool, I think. So let's test it out. Okay, so let's test it out. So we'll do I bone 1000. Then we'll do slash present. And we'll give all the items inside the present. Click create present. And we'll try putting the present down. Let's make it daylight. So we'll put the present down here and we'll open it. And then the thing goes up. Boom. And as you can see, all, uh, all the items shoot up. So I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty cool. Um, but we're almost done here. So we just need to now make it so that we need, we need another, we need another armor stand so that it actually shows the message if a message is provided in the present. So yeah, that's what we need. So let's try doing that. So let's go back up here to the other armor stand, the first one, the Merry Christmas armor stand. And let's just actually copy it. There we go. And we'll rename it to message. All right, there we go. So we can get rid of this now also. So first thing we need to do is make sure that the, um, we need to check to see if that, if the present that was opened actually has a message inside of it. So all we have to do to do that is check to see if the persistent data container of the chest that we're opening has the present message um, key. So let's go, actually, let's just copy this. Let's steal that and go down here to where we're doing the name. So here, let's do instead of item place dot get item meta dot get persistent data container, we're going to access the tau state. So we'll do state dot get persistent data container dot has per, uh, present message, and that will allow us to determine if that present has a present message within it. And so if it does, then we can access that present message really easily, and then set it to be the custom uh, name tag of the armor stand. Okay, so if it's true, we can cut this, put it in here, and do color tills dot translate color codes, and we want to grab it, so we'll just cut this or steal it, copy it, put it in here, and do git. So that's going to grab the present message from the persistent data container of the present that we're opening, and then put it into the uh, custom name method here, which will set the hologram itself 
and then we'll set custom name visible to true. Otherwise, what we want to do is do message dot um, set custom name to just an empty string, and then we'll do message message dot set custom name to false, and that should hide the hologram itself. So, oh, custom name visible. I mean, sorry about that. So just to recap, that'll check to see if the present message is within the present that we're opening. If it is, then we'll set a hologram that shows that message right under the other hologram that says Merry Christmas. Otherwise, we'll not have the hologram by setting the custom name visible to false. And we want to make sure that the hologram that we're creating, the message hologram is one, uh, is right under the first hologram that says Merry Christmas. So instead of doing negative 0.5, we'll do negative one, which should put it right under uh, the first one, okay? So let's see how this looks. So reload confirm. Okay, good. So let's try opening this one. Good, nothing happens. But if we do try making a present with a message, it should show that message. So let's get rid of that. So we'll do slash presents um, Illuminati and we'll say, I love you. So this will create a present with a message. So boom, boom, and it says, I love you, just like that. So pretty cool, if I do say so myself. So let's just uh, edit the message just a little bit here to make it look like just a little better. Um, so we're gonna do, um, have some quotes around it. So since it's a message, we're gonna have quotes around it. So um, escape, quote, and then space, and then and F, and F, and then and O to make it um, uh, italicized. And so that's gonna italicize it. And then after that, we want to do this again. So a closing quote, so escape and then quote. But before we do that, we want to reset it so that it's italicized also. There we go. So let's see how that looks. Put it down, boom. And now it says, I love you, italicized, and then it has quotes around it. So it looks better in my opinion. Now let's make it so that whenever we try opening the chest, we want to check to see if it has a recipient, if it does have a recipient, we want to make sure that the person who's opening the present um, is the recipient. Otherwise, we want to prevent them from opening the chest. So right here is where we will do that. So if it's a present, then that's good. But also I'm going to say if a container dot has new namespace key elf .get plugin or elf tutorial .get plugin present recipient. Then persistent data type string. Okay, so then inside of here, if that's true, then it'll go inside of here. So we'll just copy this and we'll have another if statement that says if container.get, so that'll actually get the recipient, equals ignore case p.get display name. And that'll check to see if the person who's opening it is also the recipient of the present because p represents the person who the person who's uh, activating the event by opening a chest. So there we go. So if the person who's opening it is the same person who's the recipient, then they can open the chest. And so if that's not true actually, then what we want to do is do e.setCancel to true to cancel the chest from being opened. And then e.get player and then p.sendMessage color utils translate color codes and we'll just say uh, and for for dark red you are not the recipient of this present keep trying and you will end up on the naughty list okay cool so send them a little message and then we'll return to get out of this event here so the reason we're returning by the way is just because um, this this code down here will run no matter what, even if this is up here is true or false. So if we return, then it'll make sure that the rest of the events code is not run just because we're returning out of the method, okay? Okay, so let's test this out, but first I need to get my other account on my server, so I'll be right back. All right, cool, so let's make a present for my other account now. So present Cody Simpson 99. I just give a random message. Uh oh, we got an eternal exception. So it says an internal error has occurred while attempting to perform this command. What? All right, I'm back. Let's try it out. So get rid of that. Present Cody Simpson 999. Random message. There we go. So that works. 
I think it was just some kind of glitch because I was reloading so many times. So create present. And it says you have been given the present. So now if we put it down, this is actually for myself, isn't it? Yeah, I made this for myself, I think. Right? No, no, no. Okay. So yeah, this should be for my other account. So let's open this up. And it says you are not the recipient of this present. Keep trying and you'll end up on the naughty list. So let's teleport my other account to that. And let's have him try and open it. And there we go. Boom. Awesome. And the bell, the bell sound actually worked. If you pay attention very closely, you can hear it. Awesome. Whee. Awesome sauce. Great. So one final thing we need to do for this uh, open chest listener is make it so that if they try or once they open the present for the first time, it actually make it, it makes it so that the present cannot be reopened or else they can just get infinite, you know, pr items, right? So we don't want them to be able to reopen it every time like that. Yeah, we want, the, and then we also want to make it so that the chest clears all the inventory uh, or the items from the inventory. So let's do all that. Okie dokie, so let's make it so that after you um, open the chest, you cannot reopen it. So the easiest way to do that actually is just to remove the present um, uh, key from the persistent data container of the item, of the chest, right? Because what we're using here is when we open the chest, we check to see if it's a chest, and then we check to see if that chest has a persistent data key of present. And that's what we use to determine if it's a present or not. So if we remove that key, then the present will no longer will no longer be openable. So container dot remove, and all all it wants is a namespace key object. So new namespace key, elf tutorial dot get plugin, and then the string of the key itself. So present. There we go. So now we have uh, removed that key, but that actually doesn't remove it itself. That only removes it. Um, superficially so to actually remove it remove it we want to do uh, state dot update so don't forget that after you update a block state or after you after you change the state of a block you actually need to call the update method here which um, updates it literally because right now where this is only updating like the snapshot of it it's not actually updating the live block that exists in the world so this will actually make it so that the block that exists in the world is actually updated with that new uh, you know, block data. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. That was probably a really bad explanation. But the point is, is that every time you edit a block data or a tile state or anything like that, which is a block data, then you want to call the update method afterwards. Okay. So after we update the uh, tile state of the block to remove the persistent data container key of present, which will make it so that the present can no longer be opened as a present, then what we also want to do is clear the inventory of the chest so that um, they can't just open the chest again and get all the items. So here, after we're grabbing the items from the chest, it's in that uh, item stack array. So we can just go ahead and clear the chest inventory itself. So chest, um, we'll call it new chest, is equal to chest, chest.get state. And so the reason we're getting a new state, even though we already have one right here, um, is because we just updated the state right here. So if we were to edit this one, and update it, it would actually reset it to have the persistent data container key. So it's very tricky. So you just want to make sure that whenever you update a state of a block, you want to grab a new state if you're going to make more changes, basically. So that's why we're doing that. We're grabbing a new state. Uh, so a chest object, or not an object, but a chest to reference here of a new state of a chest. And then inside of that, we're going to do new chest dot get snapshot inventory dot clear. That's going to clear the snapshot inventory. So since we cleared the snapshot inventory, we want to do new chest, new chest dot update, which is for the same reason that I told you to call update up here. So again, after we call update here, if we wanted to make any future changes to the state of this chest block, then we would we would need to grab a new chest um, state reference. Okay. Anyway, so let's test it out now to make sure that it doesn't let us reopen the chest. So reload confirm. Great. So let's put this down. Try opening it. Oh, I can't open it because I'm not the recipient. So let's find that. Where am I? Where am I? Here we are. Open it up. Good. And I can't open it. I can open the chest, right? Which makes sense because it's a chest now. But I can't reopen the present, which is exactly what we wanted. And also when we do open the chest, the chest itself is empty, which is good also because all the items are being shot out of the chest when we open the, the present itself. 
Okay, so the final thing we need to do is finish the menu here. So currently we have this create present thing. It looks kind of decent. It looks kind of not decent. We want to make it look nice and we also want to add another button that says, like it has an info thing that tells you what you need to do. Um, as you saw in the example video. And then if they provide a message or a recipient to the present command, then it shows the uh, tag thing right here that shows the message and the recipient um, as an item, okay? So let's get that done and then we'll pretty much be done with this plugin, which is good because this took a long time, longer than usual from my other videos. And this isn't even that complex if you think about it. I mean, I've, you know, this is not that complex to be honest. But um, let's find where we need to do that. So we need to go to the new present menu right here, and then that's where we can create everything. So right here, we'll create the info item by using the uh, make item utility method. So uh, item stack, item stack equal to make item material dot paper color utils dot translate color codes, and we'll say and e and l to make it bold yellow info. For the lower, you're just going to put what you need to do, or what the the person inside the menu needs to do. So we're going to say and a put the items you want in the present uh, in the box above. All right, so that should create the info item. Now we need to tell it where to put it, and we'll just put it right next to the other item. So inventory dot set item for uh, thirty nine info, just like that. And then let's also color this using Christmas colors. I'm just gonna copy it and paste it, just because it'll take a while to put it. So Christmas present, uh, create present inside Christmas colors or with Christmas colors, and we'll just copy this other one here too, real quick. And you'll see how this looks in a second, Second, but it's just literally just coloring, so it doesn't really matter that I show you. So I'm just going to steal it from my other project here. There we go. So now it should say create present with Christmas colors, and it says click this item in the elves will package your present. Pretty cool. And so the final other item that we need is also the tag item that I told you about. So if a recipient or a message was provided, we'll put another item for that. So we'll do if player menu utility dot get present message is not equal to null or um, player menu utility dot get present uh, get recipient is not equal to null that means that we know that a message or a recipient was provided if one of these were provided then we can go ahead and make the tag item so item stack um, tag item or just call it tag is equal to new item stack material dot name tag one item meta message meta is equal to tag dot get item meta import item meta and uh, okay so if player menu utility dot get recipient is not equal to null oh yeah let's change this to tag meta because it's for a tag not for just the message in general okay so uh, mess tag meta dot set display name uh, color utils dot translate color codes and we'll just say like like you might see on a gift whenever you're opening presents um, on christmas day you might see like a tag that says two two billy bob from santa something like that so we'll just have a two tag that says two and then the person that is the recipient so player menu utility dot get recipient and that should put it there so now down here we'll do the message so array list String message lore is equal to new array list. And so if player oops if player menu utility dot give a message is not equal to null, that means they, they provided a message. So if it's not equal to null, then we can do message lore dot add and then add the message. So color utils dot translate color codes and um, Let's find a color code. I have one already, so we'll just copy this one, steal it, and put it here. And you'll see how that looks in a second. So that's the color code we're using, message lore add, that color, player menu utility dot get message. So that should put the message as the lore um, for this array list here. Otherwise, if there was no message provided um, in, the, in the present command, then we can go ahead and just put a default message. Uh, so we'll say message lore dot add, and we'll say happy new year. We'll say and a happy new year. 
and a happy new year. I mean, they prob they're they not going to see this anyway, um, besides on this item. They're not going to see it when they open the present, although we could do that, but yeah. So anyway, final thing we cannot forget is we need to set the item meta and also the lore. So tag meta dot set lore, um, message lore, and then tag dot set item meta, tag meta, just like that. There we go, so that should set the item. Final thing we cannot forget as well is also to actually add this item to their inventory. So we'll do inventory.add item, which will add it to the first available slot, which should be the first slot. So inventory.add item tag. There we go. So again, just to recap what's happening here is, uh... so um, if a, a message or a recipient is provided inside of the present command, then they're going to have a tag item inside the present that shows um, who the recipient is to the message to the, for the present. And then also it'll show the present a message if a message was provided on that tag. So let's go ahead and uh, try this out so I can show you what exactly this looks like before we continue here. All right, so let's go do reload confirm. All right, so slash presence, present Bob, blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, Bob's not person, so slash present Illuminati, like that. So there we go, so now it says to Illuminati and then the message is in green under that, there we go. And then if a message is not provided, it'll say happy new year. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so the reason it's doing that is just because we never like reset the player menu utility um, after we're done using the inventory. So to fix that, we could go ahead and make a inventory close event. So whenever the inventory closes, we could make it so that the uh, the player menu utility resets its uh, its values, just so we can make sure that it doesn't you know mess up like that again. But just for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to leave it how it is. I guess that's fine how it is, and so. Okay, so before we continue here, we need to make sure that uh, whenever we create the item, it doesn't put this tag within the present itself. It needs to ignore this one if it's present, okay? So let's go back up to uh, handle menu here. And so right here where we're checking to see, or right here where we are um, uh, grabbing all of the items and then putting them into this items array list here, we wanna first check to see if that tag item is present before we do uh, that, because we need to determine if we need to ignore it or not before we continue here. So the easiest way to do that is really just to check to see if a uh, if the player menu utility um, contains a message or a uh, recipient, just like we're doing here. So we'll just steal this, go back up here. So if player menu utility dot message is not equal to null or player menu utility dot recipient is not equal to null, then we know that the tag is going to be there. So if the tag is going to be there, then we need to ignore, uh, we need to ignore it. So first let's put this inside of here. So else is the normal condition. Otherwise we need to change it. So it ignores the first one just by changing that to one. There we go. And uh, also what we need to do is make it so that if the message or the recipient is present, they cannot steal the tag into their own inventory, if that makes sense. So we want to make sure that they cannot grab it or move it or anything like that and put it into their own inventory. So to do that, so to do that we can just check to see if the first slot um, is being selected, but we only want it to cancel if if it's um, present, right? So up here, well, again, we'll just do if player menu utility dog get message, player menu utility dog get recipient. If that's true, then we can just do uh, if e dog get slot is equal to zero, then e dot set canceled is true. There we go. Otherwise, then it can continue as normal. So let's see what happens when we try this out. All right, so reload confirm. Let's kill, clear our inventory and we'll do I bone 1000. There we go. And um, so now we'll do slash presence Illuminati, um, you smell. There we go, so it says to Illum Illuminati, you smell and we cannot move it, which is good, but we can move all the other items, which is also good. All right, so cool, now let's do Oh yeah, we forgot to use the color translator for this here. So let's make sure we do that in a second. And yeah, so let's click create present. That's gonna create the present. Everything looks good so far. So present from Illuminati to Illuminati. Uh, place the present down, open the present up and it says you smell, which is good. 
and boom, there we go. And the item doesn't come out because the item was ignored, or the tag item is what I'm talking about. So the tag item was ignored whenever it was adding the items to that array list as you saw right here. So it checks to see if the tag item is present by checking to see if these two things are present or not. And then it ignores it if it is, okay? Pretty simple stuff, simple stuff. Um, so what are we gonna do now? Oh yeah, we need to make the color translator work for these lore, for the lore over here. So, okay, so right here is where we're not doing it. So just cut this and do color utils dot translate color codes, paste that in. Color tills, color utils dot translate color codes, paste that in. And then finally, color utils dot translate color codes, paste that in. There we go. And let's try this out just to make sure everything's good to go. Reload, confirm. All right, cool. Reload, confirm. And then we'll do slash present, Cody Simpson, blah, blah, blah. And looks good. Yep, there we go. Looks good. Everything's nice and sexy. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, cool. There we go. That's the end of this. Looks like we finished everything that we wanted to accomplish here. So that's our Christmas plugin for this year. Maybe I'll do another Christmas plugin next year. So uh, stay tuned for that. And if you like this little plugin tutorial, then leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this, long videos where I show you how to make specific plugins, then please um, let me know what plugins you want to see. And then also, you know, hit that like button so I know that you like it. And uh, yeah, so I'm thinking about doing a mini game plugin, um, like a snowball fight mini game where you can duel people. So that's something I'm thinking about making. So maybe if you want to see that, let me know. I also want to wish you a happy new year. Thank you for supporting my videos this year. Um, this year alone, I got to 13 or 12,000 subscribers. I'm about to hit 13,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Thank you guys for all the support over these past few year past few years. And I'm sorry, I'm still learning how to talk apparently, but I appreciate all the support. I'm glad you like my videos. I'm glad it helps so many of you guys. Cause every time I stream a bunch of you guys come into the stream and let me know how much the series has helped you. So I'm very glad to hear that. And, uh, let's have another good year productive year where we make some really cool tutorials and uh yeah anyway so the code for this tutorial will be in the description below like always so you can check it out and bookmark it for future use in case you want to see the code or anything or anything like that also the link for my discord server will be in the description below so check it out and join that so you can join our community get involved ask for help you know whatever you want to do it's a cool programming community for programmers so check it out and one final thing is if you want to support my channel, keep me going, um, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month, $5 or $10. So I appreciate all your support. You don't have to, but if you want to support the channel um, somehow, that's one way you could do it. Or you can just keep in that like button. It's up to you. And the YouTube membership comes with a bunch of cool perks like early access to all of my new videos a cool Discord rank on my Discord server so you can show everyone how swaggy you are. And finally, you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So thanks, guys. Have a happy new year again. Um, thanks for watching my videos. If you like the video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.